Okay, so the last topic that we'll cover in this class is differential equations, okay? So differential equations, we'll, we'll mainly use these to model uh, continuous time dynamical systems. But before we get into that, let's just talk about what differential equations are and where they come from and how do we solve them and how do we use them. So they're typically used to model continuous time dynamical systems, right? But what is a differential equation, right? A differential equation is basically any equation that involves a derivative, okay? That's all it is, it just involves derivatives. Okay, so an example would be Let's say we have derivative of position is equal to velocity, right? So this is a differential equation because it has a derivative on one side of the equation and some function on the other side, okay? And so basically, you know, a differential equation kind of comes out of the question you know, what if we know the rate of change of something and we want to know that quantity? And we want to know the original quantity. Okay, so typically what we've had up to this point, right? We've typically thought of, let's say we have, uh, let me draw circles here. We typically have quantities, right? So maybe we have like the position or maybe we have like a volume or something, right? We have some functions of time, right? And if we wanted to know, you know, more information about them, we'd say, okay, well, let's take their derivative and that will give us, you know, the rate of change of that quantity. Rate of change. Right, so that would give us P prime of T or V prime of T, right? And to go from the quantity to the rate of change, we take the derivative or differentiate. Right? And so typically we measure this quantity over time, right? And we say, okay, this is the function. Let's differentiate it, calculate these average rates of change or the, you know, the derivatives of those functions and kind of go from there. Right, so you calculate these from those measurements. But oftentimes we have things that are actually easier to measure as a rate and infer the original quantity. So stuff like, uh, you know, sometimes it's easier to grab the velocity of an object than to track its position through whatever space it's living in. Or another example would be in cells, we typically wanna be interested in the number of ions that are moving in and out of these cells. And counting up all those ions would be really difficult or almost impossible to do. But we can measure the current as, as those ions pass in and out of those channels and then you can measure that current and infer how many ions there are inside or outside, okay? So the reverse process it's kind of what we're focusing on here with differential equations, right? So the idea being you instead measure the rate of change, right? And we want to infer the original quantity, right? We want to answer this question here. What if we know the rate of change and we want to know the original quantity, right? So we can measure this rate of change and then we can solve a differential equation to find this quantity to compute or calculate the quantity, okay? So it's kind of going in the reverse direction, okay? So let's give an example of this, okay? So an example would be, let's say we are driving a car, right? At a constant speed. 
of let's say five miles per hour, right? Maybe we're just learning how to drive in a parking lot and we keep that car at a constant speed of five miles per hour, right? Then the question might be how far has the car gone, right? So first of all, for this question to even make sense, we need to know where we started, right? Because how far has the car gone, gone since when, right? So in order for this to make sense, we need an initial condition. Initial condition for this problem to even make sense at all, right? I can say you're driving at a constant speed. You know, what's your position? In order to know the position, you have to know at least some reference point. So you could say I am, you know, five miles from this starting point, for instance. Okay, so first of all, we need an initial condition, much like we need an initial condition in those discrete time systems. Okay, but let's try to write down uh, the differential equation for this system, right? So the differential equation here right? Constant speed is five miles per hour, right? So this tells us that the velocity is five, right? Or five miles per hour. But if we're just thinking about a function without units on it, it's five, right? So the differential equation for this system would be, right? We need an equation involving the derivative, the derivative of what, right? Let's say the position is going to be P. Right. So the derivative of that position is equal to this velocity, right? So that says, okay, the derivative is going to be five. Right. So the derivative of our position with respect to time is equal to five, right? That's what the speed being constant means, right? The speed is constant and it's five miles per hour. And that means that at every moment in time, the derivative of your position is equal to five, okay? So then if we want to think about, okay, how do we solve this problem? How far has the car gone? We'll learn a couple different techniques for this. We'll learn integration, we'll learn Euler's method, but a tried and true method that will always work if you can guess correctly is guess and check, okay? So we're going to guess and check a solution, okay? And to do this, we're just going to have to think carefully, right? In order for this position, to have constant uh, derivative, right? This is saying that the derivative of p is five, right? So p prime t is equal to five. So what functions have constant derivative, right? So constant derivative. So that would imply that p has to be a linear function, right? Because the only functions with constant derivatives are linear functions where the derivative of the linear function is just the slope that you pull off there right so this would imply that p as a function of time is linear with slope 5 right because that's what it means for it to have a constant derivative of 5 okay so we're going to guess the solution p of t is equal to 5 times t plus some constant c Right, so it's a linear function with slope five and C is just some constant, right? And the reason we don't know what the constant is is because it could be any line, right? Any line with slope five is going to have derivative five, right? Any line with slope five works. And what do I mean by works? I mean, if I check that this is solution. Just check that something is the solution to a differential equation. I just take its derivative and plug it into my differential equation, right? So if I take P of T equals five T plus C, if I take this derivative P prime of T, I get five plus zero equals five, right? Which means if I plug it into DP DT equals five, it works, right? Because the derivative of that Solution is actually five, okay? But no matter what C I pick, it will be a solution, right? And that's because we don't really know what this position function should be without a reference point, okay? So in order to determine which line we're on, we need to give the problem an initial condition, right? So this is what we set up here. 
This question doesn't make sense unless we define some sort of reference point, right? Driving a car at constant speed, how far have you gone? How far have you gone since when, right? It doesn't make sense as a question unless you have this initial condition, right? And, you know, driving a car at constant speed, any function of the form p of t equals 5t plus c has the same speed. In order to, for it to actually make sense for a particular problem, we have to say where this car started. That will define this C, and it'll determine our solution. Right? So this is a general form of the solution. We're looking for the exact solution for a particular problem. All right, so let's just say, for the sake of argument, that our question is how far has the car gone since you know, we started it. We started or turned the car on, right? So we would say, okay, how far has it gone since we started the car? Well, then in that case, we could define this initial position equal to zero, right? So then position zero, and then how far has it gone since then will be how far have you gone since you started the car? Well, when you start the car at time zero, you've gone nowhere. So P of zero should be zero, okay? So if we use this as our initial condition, then we need to find the C, right? So then we plug in, okay, P of T is equal to five T plus C. We plug in this initial condition, P of zero equals five times zero plus C is supposed to be equal to zero. And what that tells us is that C has to be zero, okay? And then our exact solution for this problem, how far have you gone since you turn on the car? If you're always moving at constant speed five, well then your position, you know, in reference to where you started would be five times T. So five miles per hour times however long you've gone, which makes sense, okay? And so this is generally how these differential equations work. We have some measured quantity, right? This rate of change being our measured quantity instead of the quantity being the measured quantity. We measure that rate of change. We write down a differential equation that describes that rate of change in reference to the original variables. You know, how does it change depending on time as a function of time? We solve that differential equation using some method. We'll learn a bunch of different methods for solving these. And that gives you the quantity that you're interested in, right? Okay. There's one other thing that we'll go over, and so this is something that we'll do kind of later, is there's mainly two types of differential equations that we'll go over in this class. Differential equations, or DEs. We'll also call them DEs, uh, just for shorthand. Okay, and so the first type is the one we just talked about but maybe you didn't notice since I just had it as a constant number, but uh, one type is called a pure time differential equation, right? And so this will be the subject of chapter four, right? So in a pure time differential equation, an example would be like the one we just did where dp dt was equal to five, right? This is just some function of time. That function of time is, is five times, you know, t to the zero. So t doesn't really appear explicitly, but you could think of that as a function of time. Another example might be, I don't know, the volume changes like e to the minus t or something, right? So then that's very clearly the derivative of this quantity v, this volume, is a function of time, okay? And so in this case, this is when we measure a rate of change as a function of time. Okay, and then we write down the differential equation, and then we want to solve to find the original quantities. Right? The other type of differential equation that we'll cover in the next section are called autonomous, autonomous DEs, autonomous differential equations. So this will be the subject of chapter five. Right? So an example of this would be something of this form. Let's say dp dt equals two p now. So now the, the state variable appears on both sides of the equation. It appears as the derivative and on the right as that function, right? So here, this is kind of more similar to a discrete time system where we derive a rule 
for the rate of change of a quantity of a quantity as a function of that quantity of that quantity, right? And so here it's called autonomous because it doesn't depend on time. And so this would be, you know, something like population growth, where we say the population, the change in population, the derivative of population with respect to time, is equal to two times the current population level. So this is like we have an idea of the mechanism, right? We say, okay, this population is going to double through time. So depending on the population level, it's going to increase by two times that number, right? And so here we'd say, okay, dPT equals 2P. Now it's no longer a time differential equation. We can't do the same techniques to solve it, so we'll learn different techniques to solve them in chapter five, okay? But these are the two kind of distinctions. We have functions, uh, differential equations, where we have derivative on one side and a function of time on the other. And in that case, we can use integration, antiderivatives, Euler's method, what have you, all these techniques that we'll cover in the first two weeks of this section, right? And then the other type of differential equation are these autonomous differential equations where it's a derivative equals some function of the quantity itself. So not a function of time, but a quantity of, uh, a function of the quantity that we took the derivative of on the left-hand side. So this is a little more complicated and it kind of comes from thinking about these things as modeling um, some sort of system mechanistically. Whereas over here, we're modeling them by some rate of change that we measure as a function of time, right? So we saw, okay, for this speedometer one, we saw that the speedometer was constant. It was just always equal to five. For this one, this volume, we're saying, okay, this volume is changing like this function, e to the minus t. And so they're different in kind of where they come from and how we're gonna approach uh, their solutions. But for all these systems, we'll have to have initial conditions. We'll have to solve them using similar techniques. And we'll kind of cover that for this back uh, portion of the class. Okay, so we'll stop here and then the next video we'll think about solving some of these pure time differential equations using our first, I guess our second method. The first method being guess and check. Second method we'll learn is called Euler's method. Okay.